Um, hello, we're back. As many of you, of you know, we have chapters of the Mars Society all over the world, and today we are very lucky to have Mr. Uh, Peter Nikoloff here from Mars Society Australia, and he will be talking about what's up down under. So welcome, Mr. Nikoloff. Hey everyone, as you can tell I'm uh, from down under, I'm an aerospace engineer, I've been working in sort of the aerospace sector and sort of space related bits uh, in Australia for the last 25, 30 odd years. Um, and I recently in the last uh, 12 months or so have become a member of the, uh, the Mars Society in, in South Australia, in Adelaide, and have been helping them along uh, with trying to sort of forward the goals of uh, Mars events and activities in Australia. So uh, Robert came to Australia a little while back, Robert and his uh, beautiful uh, partner, Hope, um, and, and we really got on really well. And I offered to, to give th this crowd a bit of an idea on what some of the activities we're doing in Australia towards the Mars effort. And also it's a good opportunity, you know, I've got business cards and these email addresses, to try and set up a bit more collaboration between, uh, or internationally, especially with you guys, a, a fairly big organisation. We do a fair bit anyway. But what I'll do, I'll just quickly get into the presentation now and uh, we'll have a few minutes for questions at the end. So if you want to ask anything. So our mission is, I guess, fairly similar to the overall goals of, uh, of Mars. So it's looking at public outreach um, with a vision of pioneering uh, exploration and, and habitation of Mars. Um, trying to uh, support more aggressive government funding. Um, our government funding is... Uh, Pretty shocking. I'll talk a bit about that later. Um, looking at supporting exploration of uh, of Mars from the from private side, uh, and also encouraging Australian uh, uh, people with respect to the sciences and the exploration of planetary and uh, engineering and educational industry type activities. So the STEM activities, which uh, everyone talks about. Uh, one of our <coughs> key objectives and, and stuff we've done a fair bit of work on over the last decade is um, conducting a whole bunch of research um, looking at surface uh, um, exploration activities and strategies and technologies using a, an analogue type environment. Um, so that's, that's a fairly strong part of our particular program in Australia. Um, Mars Analog Research, uh, I guess as you, well, most of you are probably aware, um, the Mars Society in the US has, has got a very active program, done fantastic work in a couple of sites around uh, North America. Um, and, and really the areas uh, we're looking at is uh, doing similar sort of activities but try and uh, focus on areas that uh, they're not doing so much of here. But the, the good thing about Australia is we do have a very um, diverse country um, landscape uh, with very ancient geology. So there's a lot of good opportunities to do uh, fairly uh, good um, analogues and expeditions with respect to uh, geology and exploring those, those surfaces. Um, the Mars is extremely dangerous and I guess like the, um, the research station in Utah and, and the one we're proposing in Australia, we, we do have those arid and, and sort of remote areas which makes you think about some, some, some of the hazards you may, may have to cope with on, on Mars. So there are, there are two of the stations which um, you, you guys should be very familiar with, but they're sort of based on the, the, the Tunican style habitat. Um, so Robert's uh, vision up the top right hand corner there and, and the two, the two uh, habitats down there, fairly similar um, construction. Now the Australian approach. Oh sorry, that's just a little bit more detail of the uh, configuration of the uh, Canadian facility which is very similar to the US one. Now Australia. A testing ground for Mars down under, as you can see there, that's just a typical example of some of the areas in Australia. Um, so as, as you can see, we, we have vast areas of desert, salt lakes and, and uh, very sparsely popular uh, vegetated regions. So that, that, that 
We can choose whatever areas we would like to uh, conduct a particular activity. Um, so it's very unique. It's a very ancient landscape. A lot of it hasn't been eroded, so you've got access to uh, uh, areas which are very difficult to find around the world. Um, the landforms, as you can see, are, are quite varied. Um, there are many preserved impact craters around Australia as well. You can explore those areas. Um, and also we've got some of the um, oldest fossil areas in the world to explore. So it gives us the opportunity to explore our techniques on Mars in invariably similar type environments on Earth. Um, it's, even though it's quite remote, um, it's fairly dry and the dirt roads, are, it's quite accessible and you've got access to really modern infrastructure which is very, very handy for uh, conducting um, practical um, Mars analog type activities. And the areas are extremely large, so you've got the opportunity to do a lot of long range uh, rover type exploration um, testing. There's a little bit more of the, uh, the type of terrain, so <laughs> that looks very familiar. I, I, I work in in the aerospace side at our, our Woomera rocket range with our aerospace uh, testing of military aircraft and we've got lots of areas like that and uh, those sort of very open areas are also handy for other trials we've done like with JAXA with their sample return missions. We've landed the Hayabusa capsule uh, in, in Woomera as well. Site selection, so over the last decade or so, a little bit more of a decade, the Mars Society has done a number of expeditions and they initially kicked off with looking at a, a, a location we knew. So there was an expedition that covered vast areas of um, South Australia, which is only a, a relatively small percentage of the continent, but that's literally thousands and thousands of kilometres across. So it's a, it's a huge, huge area. Um, and finally, fr from that that, uh, that survey looking at all sorts of areas from engineering, logistics, um, the type of geology, uh, accessibility and things like that. We, we focused on an area uh, called Arkor, so it's a town called Arkarula. And we've done a number of expeditions out there, but the, the, one of the advantages of being out there is that there is a, a local um, community, there's a, a fair bit of a, a little bit of a tourist hub, and they do a bunch of uh, astronomical type um, tourism as well, so there's, there's a good sized telescope there. Uh, so the concept is, if we deployed a, a research station out, out to that sort of area, we can increase the, the density of science and uh, education we can do, science research and education we can do in that area. And, and the local community, uh, um, <coughs> pardon me, is very supportive. So that's, a, that's our aim, is to set up the uh, analog at Arkarula. So it's located out back South Australia, as I mentioned, about an eight hours drive from our capital city of Adelaide, which is over a million people, so there's very good infrastructure there. Um, it's, 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 it's un unpopulated, so minimal external interaction for those sort of isolation type missions. There's access via dirt roads, so you definitely need four drives out there. Uh, we can, because it's, a, it's on a bit of a station, we can sort of shut it off from other people for all drive tours and things like that, disrupting any activities. Uh, there's an all weather airfield close by, so from the safety point of view, um, we can get the Royal Australian Flying Doctors in there. It's, it's a service which provides coverage to all the outback communities uh, for emergency and routine medical support. So that, that's a very important factor. Uh, it's got a very red, rich red, red uh, soil, which again, helps add to more of the public side of the, the field, making it exciting. Um, and it is extremely dry, typically. We have occasional bursts of, of large amounts of rain, but it's normally typically dry. And temperatures range in summer from, well, for your, the average temperatures for, for you guys of 95 to summer lows of 68 um, Fahrenheit. And winter go ranges from about 59 to down to 39, so it doesn't get below freezing out there. So at, at this particular site, the 
with plan is to set up what we, we're calling Mars Oz, the Australian <laughs> Mars Analog Research Station. And that's a bit of a, a concept of what a, 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 I guess our ultimate aim is to develop a, a large scale type capability. So you'll have habitats, um, garages for the, the vehicle, um, food, food generation areas and also power generation areas. Now we're doing a slightly different approach to the tuna can concept. Um, our concept is looking at the biconical type form, so based on one of the early proposals of how we'd uh, uh, deliver equipment to the Martian surface. It is, is aimed to support a crew of eight, um, and there'll be multiple modules with, with various roles and responsibilities for the program. It's support multidisciplinary research, everything from human factors to science to logistics, all, all the areas you need to look at for a mission. But also the other thing that they're very active in Australia is when we do studies and activities like this, we, we make sure we try and produce uh, high quality papers and get them out into the, um, into the world environment. So that, that's very important. If you're doing work, you've got to make sure you document it so what lessons we learn other people can also look at and comment on and uh, tell what we're doing. We're currently trying to seek funding, and uh, as Robert was aware, it's very tough. But we're, we're, we're working hard, we're rejuvenating it. I'm, I'm sort of giving it a big kick off uh, with my, my um, start to supporting the program. Um, the other, one of the big advantages is we're actually looking at a quite a, a different configuration and, and looking at some of the lessons learned. So it actually gives us a bit of diversity in, in li living areas and habitats. So, um, that's one of the reasons why we haven't just gone with a standard um, configuration that's already been, been out there. So new, new is always good and, and gives different ideas. That's just a bit of an overview of the, uh, the landing sequence. So it'll come in, a bit of aero drag, parachutes, landing up probably on, on, on thrusters. And then the modules will be reconfigured once we're on the ground. And one of the modules includes a return capability, a little bit different to Mars One options. That's a bit of a close up of uh, what we're proposing. And down there, they're the key systems we're actually going to be working on. So whether it's the Mars members or through university studies, um, support from industry, they're the type of systems we want to ultimately set up and, and, and look at. Um, with an ultimate aim of being totally self-sufficient and which is obviously the, the concept we'll need when we go to Mars. It's just a few uh, cross-sections of the uh, habitats. <coughs> so it includes everything from living quarters, to laboratories, um, wet areas and uh, EVA um, uh, airlocks. So it's very squeezy. But as one of our Prime Ministers said, life wasn't meant to be easy. That's the cargo, sorry, and the cargo and returnist stage. So that's a very big ambitious project. What we're doing in the interim, we're currently doing some studies on the a piglet system, so a much smaller uh, system, which we can start proving some of these technologies. Um, and it'll be a lot easier, cheaper to build, move around, we can put it on the back of a truck, move it to different sites. Um, so that, that's an area we're, we're currently working on at the moment. But very similar concepts to the, uh, the Mars Oz main. The other project to support that is the um, marsupial, Mars marsupial. Uh, Supial is an Australian animal. So concept there, part of going to Mars is obviously the geology and exploration side and even just supporting the, the habitat and winning resources. So the vehicle is going to be crucial. So what we're doing as part of our um, habitat is actually looking at building a vehicle so we can explore those various technologies and uh, 
mission requirements. That just gives you a bit of an example of some of the uh, <laughs> rover concepts. Obviously, the moon rover wouldn't last uh, very long in uh, a Martian environment and hasn't got much capacity apart from moving a couple of people. So obviously, we need to go to something that is practical and can support an activity on Mars. We've actually started this project uh, and, and it's been uh, kindly supported by the, the, the Star Chaser program. The, uh, the vehicle is currently in Tasmania. We've got a ferry, so we'll get it to, <laughs> to mainland Australia ultimately. Um, but it's going to be based on a, a Land Rover chassis and we've stripped it back and we're starting to build, build that construction. But it's going to be an analog of a, a pressurised long range vehicle. Um, so it will be able to support a living looking at, at journeys up to 100 kilometres range um, and it'll design to be sort of compact and support to two people. There's just some of the uh, schematics. The back section can actually be removable, so the front section will be pressurised, the back section will be like a utility type capability to support different missions. And one of the things we'll be doing with that is also looking at various systems and things like that. So we'll have electronic systems for monitoring, pa monitoring power and, and all sorts of things you'll need for the uh, real rover. Now, I've got five minutes left. I'll, I'll just rush through these last parts. Expeditions, because we haven't got a research station, we've done numerous expeditions over the last decade or more. And these are done in collaboration with um, Space with Bound, which is a uh, uh, a NASA initiative um, that's come out of NASA Ames and we're a, a partner with them. Uh, so their focus is to basically try and to get students and teachers um, and, and develop their knowledge and skills and science and activities so we can pass it on to the community. Um, their focus is looking at analogs. It doesn't have to be restricted to Mars, it could be Moon. and. Uh, we work very closely with them on numerous programs. Our program started, uh, our expedition started in 2001 with the surveys which I showed you earlier, look, trying to identify sites, but it was much broader than just those last six that we looked at. So we covered all areas from uh, Western Australia uh, all the way through into South Australia. Now in 2003, we had a joint mission with the US Canadians and Australians uh, and actually came to the US, went to the, the Mars uh, Desert Research Station. Uh, in 2004, our second big expedition, we went to Arkra, so started looking around, working in the area where we're proposing to build our, our analogue and looking at various geology, biology and uh, space suits. Then various uh, numerous spaceward bound events at various sites in Australia and uh, in, in South Australia and uh, Western Australia. 2014 we had a challenge with the Indians, um, had, had a bunch of students coming over looking at uh, robotics with Australian students and uh, this year we'll be sending some observers to uh, Space World Bank in New Zealand. Conferences, we've been running conferences from 2000 to 2012 looking at Mars exploration. Because it's such a small community we, we've actually aligned this now with the Australian Space Research Conference and the next one is in September the end of September. So if you're in Canberra, Australia, uh, you're certainly welcome to come along. Give me a buzz and we'll, we can chat about it if you want to talk. Um, Off-Earth mining is another area one of the local universities is working on. Uh, Australia is a world leader in mining. Um, so they've got a, a seminar later this year and also the International Astronomical Congress, a big coup. We've been working hard, we've got that happening in Australia as well in 2017. So start planning your trips to see some kangaroos, koalas. Very quickly, Australian space policy sucks. We don't do really anything in the, the out there visionary exploration stuff. We had an inquiry because we have got no space uh, agency in 2008. They said we need to write a policy. They narrowed that down just looking at satellites. We had a little involvement with the, ex the global exploration strategy that NASA is sort of focusing on with the international teams, but dropped out of that. So yeah. We've really got no vision, which is very disappointing, but we're working on it. That's one of our aims. The other big one is where JPL have got one of their deep um, 
uh, space network stations, one of the three in, in Australia, and we've supported a lot of activity there. That's, uh, well, there's, there's uh, four telescopes, uh, antennas there. Um, but basically, it's run by our, our CSIRO, um, uh, the Science and Industrial Research Organisation. Um, we've supported missions since, since the Mercury days, but they've been across different antennas in Australia. It's all focusing in Canberra now. And they recently retired the famous antenna that uh, actually collected the, uh, the images from Neil Armstrong's walk on the moon. We work with JAXA mainly as a landing point, but uh, in 2010, the first sample return from the asteroid was landed in Woomera, Australia, and, and we, we helped with that recovery. They've launched their second mission to an asteroid, and that's due to land in Woomera in 2020. So keep your eyes open for 2020. So we do get involved with some really interesting projects. Education, so I've got to make this really quick. Um, Victorian Space Science Education Centre, fantastic initiative um, with our Victorian government. The building's actually built to look like a, a, a galaxy, spiral galaxy. It's got fantastic facilities um, from big auditoriums to uh, teleconferences so they can talk to all sorts of people. It's six, it's one of six science education centres. Um, it really engages students and, and, and teachers. Um, there's an advisory board from academia and government and industry that actually runs it to make sure we employ the latest educational techniques. And there's a huge number of programs, but they're highlighted to focus on what careers and study people need to look at. And it's focused at secondary school students. One of the big, big capabilities there is they, they've actually got a big, in, in the building is a big dome with a representative Martian surface with Martian materials. So the students suit up, they've got comms to a mission control centre and they run missions. We've also got a, a, a rover which they run missions there, the university's helped put together. Um, and after they finish the missions, they go into the lab and they do real, real chemistry to analyse those materials using a number of techniques. Another one. There's a bit of our private sector. A couple of passionate brothers are building a, a space facility and they want to focus on uh, academies for educating students, um, museums, uh, and ultimately an astronaut training type capability to help excite people. That's a multi-million dollar program. 30 plus million dollars they're playing there. That's going to be very exciting in Queensland and they've kicked that off with simulators already. Just some of the organisations, government industry that support us, and some of our future initiatives. So, getting the analogue happening in Australia, continued expeditions, um, focusing on getting those research papers out there, international collaboration, which hopefully will, will improve here, and finally, there's, we're actually we're working with a workshop with Indians so <laughs> with some of their planetary stuff. So, that's a quick overview of our program. Went a little bit over time. Master Society Australia, I've got some business cards if you want to make contact with us. Maybe we've got time for one question, I don't know, whatever. Sorry, that was a lot of information, but Thanks. sort of. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, Australia's a big country, but not a lot of people. Has it thought of uh, forming a space union or whatever with uh, nearby countries, New Zealand, and Singapore, or working with India in order to share resources uh, and get a foothold in space as well. Yeah, so even though we haven't got a space agency as such, um, the government, when they sort of went through these, these Senate inquiries and decided to put some policy together, they actually established a space coordination unit. And part of that unit is to look at the international collaboration. So we are looking at doing a bilateral and various multilateral agreements with other countries. So it's very small. The, the policy unit was eight people and they decided to cut that in half, the coordination of four people. What you can do with four people? But the Space Industry Association does look at collaboration as well. So from our small group of people, we do try and encourage that sort of stuff. We do work closely with a lot of the Asian countries. Japan, JAXA, as you saw there, we work closely with them and the other Asian countries. We have one more uh, question, a quick question, please. Hi. Um, uh, what in particular, if any, are you doing with um, training, uh, having simulations uh, on, on Mars with respect to uh, diet, nutrition, feeding the crews, that sort of thing, 
there's been a lot of evidence recently that's developed that changing the diet can really improve the response to radiation and that type of thing. Yeah, no, I've actually looked at the, I went to your presentation, so oh, it's very okay. interesting. <laughs> They're part of the areas that when we actually set up the establishment and we, we have longer duration activities up there, we'll be looking at all those aspects. So we've got a list of the type of activities and part of it is sustainable, um, sustainable food, food, food production and, and diets and things like that as well. So ultimately we will we'll do it. We don't do it at the moment with the expeditions but when we set up this facility that'll be a focus. And I'll, I'll probably have to give you an email to work out what we're allowed to eat. All right. Uh, thank Thanks you very much. very much. It's been great. <laughs>